everyone, I'm Becky. And I'm Sarah. And we're doing bickering book reviews. Today we're talking about You Say It First by Katie Contugno, um, which we got off of Edelweiss, correct? Yep. yep. Um, from the publisher in exchange for an honest review. And this book is about Meg, who is a senior in high school, and she has an after-school job working with a voter registration nonprofit. And she calls people whose voter registrations have expired. And she calls this number and she asks for someone. And instead of getting the person that she called for because he has passed away, she gets his son, who's 18, named Colby. And they kind of argue. And um, Meg feels bad. And so she calls him the next day and leaves him a voicemail apologizing. And then he calls her back. And through this series of interactions, they kind of develop a relationship. And they both have a lot of kind of bad things going on in their life because Colby's father has recently passed away. And he's trying to kind of figure out his place. He's graduated from high school. He lives in a small town outside of Chilcot, like, Ohio. Like, I feel like you should say, like, how his dad died, though. Like, it's not a spoiler, right? They're, they're very upfront about it, aren't they? No, I think it's, like, halfway through the book. Okay. All right. Never mind. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Should I start over? Or? No. Just keep going. I'm going to keep it. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, guys. So, we'll feel. <laughs> yes. Um. So yeah, so he's trying to figure out where he, what he should do and where, how he should live and, like, what's his next step. Meg goes, lives in Philadelphia. She goes to kind of a, an elite private school. Her parents are getting, have just gotten divorced. Her mom's a hot mess, probably an alcoholic. Um, and she's just gotten into Cornell and she doesn't want to go. And she's realized that her friend and her ex-boyfriend, who are now dating, have kind of, like, put her on this track that she got on because she didn't want to have to make decisions, but she doesn't really want to be on. And it's just kind of about how they interact and how their relationship kind of changes who they are. I'm, hmm. The only character I really liked in this whole book was Colby. Like, I found him to be the most compelling. Um, I cared where he was going and what he was doing. Um, I think I'm going to start saying something trigger worthy, like early on in this video, I guess, because kind of my opinion of Meg was she was just too much. Like she just kind of annoyed me because it always seemed like she was climbing up on a soapbox and just making everything so over the top when you can address kind of the issues of like sexism and racism and misogyny like I don't know in a more kind of not palatable way but a more I don't know not friendly like but in a way that like is not so off-putting as she did like because she was she like her opinions were her opinions and hell hath no fury if you didn't have the same opinions as her and I like I I don't I didn't like that and I feel like I know people like Meg like and I thought that it was interesting to kind of look and see how even like an older kid is still really deeply affected by their parents divorce well and I know people like Meg as well but I don't want to spend 300 plus pages with that person like and I didn't it didn't bother me but I think one of the reasons I liked this book so much was when I was in um high school and college, like my, and still one of my absolute favorite movies is You Got Mail, not You Got Mail, The Shop Around the Corner, which is what You Got Mail is based off of, um, and they write letters back and forth, and it felt very much like that to me, like I liked the interactions of the two of them, and I liked this idea that like when they talked, they could like basically bear their souls to each other, but when they got together, it wasn't as great. Well, and I think that was the other thing. Um... I really liked the concept. Like, I thought the concept was really interesting. Um, but it was just hard to believe that their relationship could be sustainable because it seems like every time they're there in person or there are other people around, it, it just went off the rails and they couldn't, like, they couldn't spend more than an hour together without having, like, knockdown, drag out fights. I don't know. I mean, they, there was, they had positive moments together. Yeah, when, there, know, when it was just the two of them. I mean, I just really liked, I liked the interaction. I liked the relationship between the two of them. And I think that's what got me. That's what hooked me. 
Yeah. Um, well, and I also think that there were like some, like there were like weird illusions um, with some of the side characters, especially like Colby's family. See, and I didn't notice that at all. It was just like, it, it seemed like his relationship with his brother was strained by more than like the obvious. And it was just, and then like, his relationship with the cop who um, he interacts with in the beginning and it was just, it was strange. And I couldn't stand the be uh, Meg's best friend. Like, well, no, she I would was... be friends with her. But I think that was kind of part of it was like, she was like, they had been friends since they were kids. And so, I mean, you have that too, where you're just like, yeah, but like, I don't know. Well, I don't want to get too much into it, but like, <sighs> Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was. I think people will enjoy it. I did not, um, because yeah, it has all of those pieces and parts that teens are going to enjoy, and they are there are realistic points of the characters. I did enjoy Colby. I just I don't know if it worked for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was like. I thought they felt really realistic. I thought that their relationships and the interacting and their personality quirks, to me, that feels more real than when everything's neat. And like I said, I just loved the, like, the parts where they were interacting over the phone calls. Well, maybe it was realistic enough and it was like, it was just like a personality clash with me. And like, maybe, maybe that's it. That like, it was realistic enough and that like, I'm not hanging out with Meg that like... <laughs> Hanging out with her was hard. Yeah. So we should probably rate it. Um, our rating system goes from top five unicorns down to two unicorns. If we don't like it, it's a horse. So I'm going to go with three. Like, it's a solid book. I do love, I do like Katie Katung, Katungo, Katungo, no? Um, because we've recently read other books by her and I enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to keep reading it. it. It didn't work for me, but I don't think that that will necessarily be the case for most readers see i really enjoyed it i'm giving it a four i i liked the relationship i liked the interactions i and i have read see and that's the thing like a lot of her books either her books are always a three or a four to, for me so i've read a lot of her stuff and i'm going to keep reading so that is where we are on you say it first all right we'll see you around bye so then i stopped the recording yeah and then I have it saved.